Good morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Hello, everyone. It's Colby, your boy, your man, the handsome young man that everybody desires but nobody can have. So this right here is Bullstad. Bullstad is a game that I've been working on for the past two and a half months. Da, da, da. Yeah, two and a half months. Um, I've been working on it with a team. Uh, in case anybody doesn't know, I am currently enrolled in Full Sail's Game Design Bachelor's Program. And this is going to be our final project. Um, it's a game called Bullstead. Um, I need to talk over with the team and make sure that they're okay with it. They probably should be, but I'm ideally going to link uh, a download for this build to this video. I will also include a link of the build notes. Um, the build notes have, you know, like the list of controls and uh, general information about this, this build in particular. Uh, so, once you download it, just unpack it, open it up, and you run this executable right here. You can, use, you can make it whatever resolution you need, uh, you can use whatever graphics quality you want, but we, I suggest you use Bolstad Strong, that's the one that we made for it, it's the one that it runs the best in. It is playable with mouse and keyboard, or a Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller. I suggest you play it with a controller because it's built better it's built uh, it's built around it a bit more than it is built around the the mouse and keyboard um, so if you boot up if you boot it up and you have a controller in, uh, plugged in um, it'll default to the controller one uh, it's a little bit finicky about detecting about uh, automatically changing if you plug your controller in or unplug it while it's running But uh, if you need to change the mode, you can do it under the options menu. Um, so I'm going to do a quick rundown of the basic mechanics of the game and uh, what it is. And then uh, after I finish that up, I will uh, play through the dungeon a while and just talk about the game in general and uh, how it's been going. So this has been... so. Uh, uh, wanted to go to the mechanics showcase. So uh, the, contr uh, the, the controls will be listed in the build notes, so I'm not going to go over those, uh, but I will go over the mechanics. So the first one is your crossbow. Pow, pow, pow. You fire off, you can, you can fire it off, pow. and once you fire it off, you fire What's your bolts. Oh, what's this? And uh, they, they spawn a pickup that you can then go pick it up. Oh, what's this? Um, oh, what's this? Pow, pow, pow. And uh, oh, you, you, oh, you, the only way you can regain bolts is by oh, picking them up. Oh, what's um, this? Pow, pow. You also are able to, oh, when you have a bolt, if you hold down the attack button, you do a charge shot. And if you see that little, pow. that little burst of... Oh, what's this? That little burst of particles right there. Pow. That means your projectile has finished charging. Hey, um, charge hey, shots do this? extra damage, and they also pierce. Uh, so if you fire a normal shot, Pow. if it hits an enemy, it'll hit them, deal damage, hey, and then you know bounce off and land. If you do a charge shot and you hit an enemy, it'll go through Pow. them, and then through any other enemies it hits until it hits a wall. Hey, what's this? Uh, the charge shot only does extra damage to the first enemy it hits, Pow. because... Uh, Pow. We originally had it that it dealt extra damage to everything, and it just kind of completely cleared rooms in one shot, and that's not exactly what we want it to do. Uh, the last thing with the crossbow, when you have no bolts, if you press and hold your fire button, oh, what's this? it'll wow. find the nearest bolt and recall it. Oh, what's this? So if you're out oh, of bolts this? and wow. Wow. there's a bunch of enemies or obstacles oh, in between you wow. and retrieving your bolts, oh, what's this? You can, uh, Pow. you can still, you, you still have a way of getting it. 
Uh, you walk slower whilst um, Pow. retrieving your bolt that way. Oh, what's this? But it's still something you can do. Uh, you, you're also capable of walking while you charge your shot. Um, and I forgot to mention, time slows down when you're charging your Pow. shot. Um, so it gives you oh, what's this? extra time to, uh, to, to, to like break the situation down and figure out exactly what you want to hit. The, s the second main mechanic is your sword. So uh, you press your sword's attack button and you will swing your sword. Your sword will damage any enemies that it hits. It can also reflect enemy projectiles. Um, and if you look... Let me enable my mouse real quick. Alrighty. Uh, so if you if you look up here, you'll see your current bolts counter. It tells you how many bolts wow. you have. If you look up here, this will tell you your drips counter. That's how many drips you have. When you swing your sword, if you hit an enemy or a projectile, it will use up one drip. And if you run out of drips, uh, your, your, your sword goes away. You can... Uh, there's a bit of, there's there's some thematic reasoning to it that I will talk about in a minute, but like I can hit him and you'll see it uses up a drip. If you hit multiple enemies or multiple projectiles, it only uses one drip ever per swing. Uh, let me reflect a projectile here. Right back at you. So yeah, you can reflect projectiles back at enemies. It uses up a drip, and the way that you gain drips wow. is by shooting enemies with your crossbow. Oh, what's wow. this? There we go. Oh, what's this? Right back at you. And if you run out right of the grips, you. you can still swing your sword. Um, and it will knock people back, but it will not deal damage to them. Wow. Oh, what's this? Um, and if I get rid of grips, get rid of my grips, it will still get rid of projectiles, but it doesn't actually reflect wow. them back. So your sword is not completely useless when you're out of drips, but it is completely incapable of dealing damage when you're out of drips. Wow. Uh, you've got destructibles. Uh, oh, what's this? Oh, those destructibles this? can drop uh, armor right now. Oh, what's this? Ah, I forgot about this. So then these bars up here, this is your armor, and this is your health. Right now, we the player is only ever able to have one health. But we are probably going to be adding content and stuff into the game. Oh, what's this? Where the player can increase their oh, what's health. This? Um, probably also one for increasing their armor. Uh, so the big Bye. important difference between health and armor is if I lose armor, I move faster. Uh, you move faster the less armor you have. Uh, it doesn't do that with health. So like if I had two health and I brought my health down to one. I wouldn't move any faster or slower, but with but armor causes you to move faster and slower. Pow, pow, pow. Right. Oh. Um, oh, what's this? And then there's also these other pickups, the ones with the drop on top of those. Those give oh, drips. What's oh, what's this? We don't have any use for them right now. They're really just there for debugging purposes, um, potentially for playtesting tools. Uh, so I'm going to switch back over to my controller now because it's quieter and because it's, the game's designed around it. Then we've got these active items. Active items Ooh, also that? use drips. So this first one I have, this is just a radial projectile burst. If I activate it, you'll see it fires off projectiles in every direction. And it also used up all my drips. Now my sword is gone. Um, if you look up... I just got rid of my mouse. If you look up next to the next in between the drips and the sword icon, you'll see the icon for your current active item as well as how many drips it costs. So, if I'm, so I'm trying to use it right now. That's why it's flashing red. It's because I don't have enough drips. Um, so if I turn invinci infinite drips on, I can fire it off. Uh, you also get this little indicator right here. It tells you how long you have before your it tells you the duration of your current active item. Oh, what's this? Um, the second one here, this is a firewall. You place it down, and it spawns fire. The fire can damage you, it also damages enemies, and if you fire bolts pow, through it, pow, 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 the bolts pow. get lit on fire, and they leave fire behind. I 
don't believe oh. that you can spawn oh, fire this? by firing through oh, a bolt's this? fire. Pow! Pow! No. Pow! Pow! You can't. Pow! Oh, Pow. what's this? Um, I believe flaming bolts also deal more Pow, damage. I'm not positive. I didn't make the active item. Uh, my role in the project has mostly just been building oh, AI, this? building the enemies. Oh, what's this? Um, but you know, oh, it's it's this? as it's a it's a it's wow. a small wow. project. Wow. So wow. as wow. as time goes on, it just kind of becomes attribution soup. Oh, Everybody works on touches, breaks, fixes every system in the game at some point or another. Wow. Yeah. So we've got the firewall. Wow. The firewall actually costs seven drips wow. because it's very powerful. Oh, what's this? Then we've got this this fireball. You you know, press it and it fires off a fireball. Ah, uh, the enemies would break on respawn right now, which we're not planning on having them be able to respawn in the finished game anyways. So if we were to fix it, it would really just be for debugging and playtesting. So we're not dedicating too much time into that. But anyways, you, you fire off the fireball. It deals damage to enemies. It also deals damage to you. Makes the big makes a big explosion. Oh, what's this? Do. Then we've also got this one. This is a bubble shield. The turrets are broken, so they can't show it. But the bubble shield, um, it makes projectiles when they hit the bubble shield. Instead of damaging you, they, they heal you. They give you armor instead of taking it away. You're still vulnerable to melee attacks and explosions but uh, it makes you invulnerable to projectiles um, these other two active items I'm not going to talk about because they are broken and oh what's that? yeah the active item system got oh, a revamp I didn't mean to go through there the active item system got a bit of a revamp and those two didn't get revamped because they need to be reworked heavily anyways so we just made new active items instead of trying to rework them because generally it's better to let go of old things that don't work very well and make new things that work well instead of trying to take the old things and fix them so they work better. Like uh, we, had a, we had a shield and an infinite ammo pickup over there, or uh, active item. But the they they just don't really fit very well with how the game is coming together. So they're probably going to get tossed. And if not, they're going to take a lot of work to try and make them usable. Anyways, so now we're into the enemy showcase scene. Um, as I said, enemies have kind of been my primary role uh, in, the, in this game, making the AI, making the enemies. I made... All of these enemies, except for the splitter and the, let me see here, and the backstabber and the damage volume. So, I should show you these guys first. These are our two most basic enemies. Uh, we've got a shooter. He just fires a single projectile at the player. Pow! Pow! Oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? And then we've got the charger. He blinks and then charges at the player, and if you see that little red box in front of him, that's the hitbox for his melee weapon. Uh, the player got the, the the player has some placeholder animations, so he looks a little bit nicer. You're, you know, his sword actually looks like a sword. Pow, pow, pow. But right now the enemies are still just you know they don't have any animations. They just kind of slide at you, and their hitboxes are very hey, clearly this? blatantly hitboxes. Um. Because, you know, this game's a work in progress. Then we have this guy. This is the burst shooter. He fires shots at the player in bursts instead of a single one at a, at a time. Um, we have it set up so that he could fire as many as we want. And we could make the amount of time between each shot in the burst however we want. Right now, he's firing a shot of a burst of three with a quarter of a second between each. Pow! 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 Oh. oh, oh! What's this? Oh, what's this? Um, but we could set him up to do whatever we wanted. All right, then we've got the exploder. Ah, I forgot to go through the obstacles first. Uh, so we have an exploding barrel obstacle, and it looks 
exactly wow. like this. So the exploder oh, yes, walks yes. at the player. Ah. Oh. They explode infinitely when they respawn sometimes. Anyways, they look exactly like our exploding barrels. They're an exploding barrel mimic. Uh, they walk at the player, they start blinking, they blink really, really fast, and then they explode. They also explode uh, just, you know, if they die. Then we've got the splitter. I didn't make this one. Uh, Robert made this one. Wow. Um, but he's basically a slime. Wow. He, uh... Splits into wow. smaller versions of himself. Oh, wow. yes, this? When you hit him, he deals damage on contact. Oh, what's this? Um, and we could make a splitter split into whatever kind of enemy we want. Uh, we could make a splitter that splitted into chargers or exploders. Wow. Or, oh, what's this? Wow. Or, uh, you know, wow. whatever. Wow. But uh, for oh, now, he just splits into smaller oh, versions of himself. Oh, oh what's this? But yeah, if we really wanted to, we could make a giant exploding barrel that exploded and split into smaller exploding barrels. Um, the system is set up pretty well. Uh, it's pretty it's it's pretty well designed and implemented, so we could we could mix and match it with other stuff. All right, then we've got the backstabber. He's a little bit broken right now. Um, I didn't make him. Ow. I tried to get some fixes done on him, but ultimately. Um, at least for this milestone, we decided that we just wanted to make new enemies instead of trying to fix this guy, because he doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense in our oh, what's this? Uh, oh, what's this? Overall, and oh, like this? how the the combat works overall. But anyways, he's supposed to try and get behind the player and then stab them. Right now, he just kind of oh, what's this? Wow. Gets behind the player oh, once and this? then just continues to stab at them oh, over and over. We've got the damage volume. This guy. He walks around, he blinks, and then he activates this big damage volume. Um, and that damage volume deals damage as long as you're inside of it. He's got wow. a lot of health as wow. well. Wow. Wow. Oh, what's this? Wow. 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 Hey, what's wow. this? Oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? Yeah. So that's him. Uh, we've got the sniper. This guy is kind of fun. He's like a, he's like a normal shooter, except for he hangs really far back, and he will charge a shot. Woo! Activates his he activates a laser. And the laser's red, or it's supposed to be red at least. It's it's defaulting to yellow a little bit sometimes. And that's not how it's supposed to act, but that's alright. He's a work in progress. So he, he makes... He, he uh, charges a shot. As long as he's charging, he's shot. His laser will be active. His laser will flash yellow, and then he fires a really, really wow. fast projectile wow. at the player. Oh, what's this? We've got our defender over here. This guy... He, uh... He's a support enemy. More than... Like, he... He, you know... Does what it says on the tin. He supports other enemies instead of doing his own thing, really. So he paths to get between the player and the nearest ranged enemy. And enemy shots, and you'll see he's got this little blue force field thing behind him. Enemy shots that go through that blue that go wow. through that, that blue thing become faster. Oh, what's this? And player shots, let me enable invincibility before I die horribly. Player shots wow. that go through it wow. get slowed down. Um, wow. He's also got a, he's he's oh, also this? got you know wow. he's big he's oh, big wow. he's got a big wow. hitbox he's very oh, wide. What's this? Wow. Oh what's wow. this? Wow. Oh what's this? Um and and he uh he just you know makes oh, the makes the the he makes other enemies harder to deal with. Then we've got the Reflector. This guy works a lot like the shooter, or rather, a lot like the defender. He paths between the player and the nearest ranged enemy. But instead of having that force field that goes on behind him, he actually wow. reflects hey, projectiles this? back at the player. Exactly in exactly the same way that I'm capable of reflecting projectiles. He reflects projectiles. Wow. And the room's really, really small, so it's kind of hard to see. Wow. 
Oh, yeah, he reflects projectiles back at me. Um, and he's got a cooldown between how long... Uh, he's got a cooldown between his reflections. So he's uh, not incredibly... In, uh, so he's, you know, not impossible to deal with. Uh, then we've got this guy. This guy's the burst shooter. Or the spread shooter, I'm sorry. And he just, you know, fires projectiles in a spread instead of a single projectile. Wow. Um, and he also explodes wow. into a big burst of projectiles when he dies. Um, and we have the, the, the enemy shooters wow. set up so that uh, we can mix and match their functionality however we like. It took me a good long while to get that figured out, but once I did, it is... But once, but it's it's really nice, so I'm very glad that I that I did it. So we could we could wow. set up the spread shooter to fire, you oh, know. What's this? He fire, he still fires his burst of three, but he also fires them in burst shots, bursts of three, just like the burst shooter. We can make the burst shooter fire spread shots if we wanted. Wow. Um, oh, what's this? We could make uh, the burst shooters. We could make any of the shooters explode in projectiles. We could make the sniper. We can make the sniper fire a spread of bullets or a burst or a burst fire. Um, and we can change the amount, we can change the amount of projectiles. Wow. So I can make him fire five oh, shots this? instead of three, or, or four, or six, or seven. And I can, we can change the angle in between each of these bullets. Uh, right now it's 30 degrees. We can change that to whatever we wanted. Wow. Um, and we can make the burst shooter oh, fire this? however many, uh, I think I already said that. But we can make the burst shooter shoot however many shots per burst with however much time between. So, uh, you know, I tested him out, and we and I made a I made a burst shooter that fired a burst of a hundred shots with one sixtieth of a second in between each shot, and he fired a spread of three shots. That was fun. That uh, that just about broke the game. Um, obstacles. But yeah, they're 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 very nice. Uh, we've got exploding barrels, so these, uh, you know, wow. you, you shoot them, they explode, you hit them with your sword, they explode. They explode any time they take damage. Explosions can also trigger uh, exploding barrels. And the exploder looks exactly like them. So he's, you know, he's an exploding barrel mimic. Then we've got uh, damage volume. This could be, you know, fire or acid or hot water or lava or spikies or a giant swarm of angry bees or a pile of knives or, you know, whatever. Whatever we wanted to skin it as. Um, just, it does damage to the player as long as they're inside it. Da -da -da -da. Then we've got this guy, the bolt thief. Wow. I really wow. like this guy. Wow. And it's, honestly, it's probably mostly because I made him, but... I don't know. I just think. Oh, what's wow. this? Wow. Uh, and the bolt thief. Wow. He's classified as an obstacle rather than an enemy, even though he Ooh, does have, you know, wow. AI wow. on him. Wow. He just picks up bolts oh, and wow. puts them in his wow. nest. Oh, wow. He's wow. probably wow. gonna be, you know, like a like a raven or oh. some kind of bird. Oh, what's this? It's something that likes shiny things and takes the wow. bolts, puts them in his nest. Oh, what's this? Uh, we've got trigger spikes. These are Ow. spikes that come up out of the ground and damage the player. Mm. Uh, the spikes will also damage enemies, but enemies will not cause them to come up out of the ground when you walk on them. So, oh my god. I completely forgot one of our, to showcase one of our main mechanics. Missed you can me. evade. Nah, you can't touch me. Nah, so that's our evade. Um, when nah, you're evading, can't. during the first half of your evade, nah, you're invulnerable. You can't take damage, and you don't uh, you don't collide with enemies. So, like, if you're backed into a corner with a bunch of enemies, you can evade over them and get out of the corner. Nah, I can't touch uh, so, for the first half of the evade, you're invincible. You also move faster. For the second nah, half, can't you can still take damage and nah, you move slower. Um, it's hard to it's hard to see because Miss me. it's very very quick, but Miss me. you'll see you go faster and then slower when nah, you evade. Can't touch me. Nah, can't touch me. So for these these spikes, though, anyways, uh, if I walk over them, they'll come up. If I tried to walk and get across them, Ow. I can't get across them fast enough, so I actually have to evade nah, over them. Touch 
Um, and like I said, the, the spikes can damage enemies. Uh, right, enemies right. walking over the spikes will not cause them to come out of the ground. However, like if I had an enemy following me and That's I evade over it, then he walks onto those spikes, he'll take damage. And then this is our last obstacle. It's just a, it's just a damage volume, but it moves. It moves around on a dolly. That's why we call it the dolly volume. He just moves around to whatever points we tell him to. We can make it move however we want. It doesn't have to be in a square. But yeah, that's what he does. And then we've got our boss. Um, I didn't make the boss, but he's... I shouldn't say, but he's really cool anyways. Uh, he is really cool. Rob made this guy. It's called the Titan. And he hops at the player, and then he wow. does his big wow. ground slams. And those big oh, rings of white that come out from him. That's actually the range at which he deals wow. damage. So if he like hops onto me or slams on me, I will take damage. Do, do, and I'll hop one more, and do his big slam. Ow! Pow! Yeah. Pow! Pow! Um, and... Um... I guess I should probably talk about the oh, themes wow. of the game in general. Wow. Uh, Bullstad's going to be a fantasy game. Wow. Oh, what's this? Um, wow. oh, what's this? I mean, it is oh, a fantasy this? game. It just doesn't look like it right now. Oh, what's this? Uh, so, Bullstad, the 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 player character. Oh, what's this? This guy was running around with the with the the crossbow for an arm, and his <sighs> and his sword. Uh, Bullstad. Wow. Wow. Oh, what's this? Bullstad is a lone warrior. As the title says, Bolstad the Lone Warrior. So the idea is that Bolstad um, was part of an order of knights that went on a big crusade against demons. But uh, they failed. They failed really, really spectacularly. So now uh, demons have invaded the world. They're all over the place. And like, the entire order of knights is dead, except for Bolstad. Um, so then wow, you've got wow, this holy crossbow... Wow. Um, oh, and you this? actually bye, bye, bye. lost your hand. Um, Bull said lost his right hand, and he replaced it with a holy crossbow. He grafted it onto his forearm, oh, where his this? hand used to be. Bye, bye, bye. And it fires these these uh, oh, what's bye. This? Oh, what's invincible this? holy bolts that are infinitely reusable. Oh, what's oh, what's this? And then uh, oh, he and then for his other hand. Uh, he has this big demonic gauntlet that he stole from the demons. It's got all kinds of demony magic, and it's powered by demon blood. That's why uh, the drips are drips instead of, you know, sword power or some other resource. Um, so the sword is actually a magic sword. Um, it's, actually, it's actually just magic. It's this big magic swing that you do with the gauntlet. And uh, it uses up it uses up magic to, to hurt enemies and to deal damage to them. Uh, wow, did I just say hurt enemies and deal damage to them? It uh, it uses up magic to hurt enemies and also to uh, reflect projectiles. Um, and then all of the active items they are also uh, they're they're like other spells that you can do with the gauntlet, and that's why they also cost strips. Um, and you gain drips, and that's also why you know you gain drips by hurting enemies with your crossbow. Pow, pow. Ah. So this right here, this is the dungeon. I guess I should, probably should have talked about it before I got into it because now I'm going to be real busy, distracted, trying to survive. All right. So this right here is the dungeon. Um, it's it's our prototype for what for. Uh, what we want the game to kind of look like when we oh, actually this? finish. What we want the finished levels of the game to look like, ultimately. Now, this is our first pass at making a dungeon. So it's still, you know... Uh, work in progress. It's still, like, pre-pre-alpha... Wow. Oh, what's this? ...of a student game. So... Um, it's wow. super, super subject wow. to change, wow. even more so than wow. normal alphas are, because you wow. know we're students as we learn better practices and, and oh, better. Wow! Wow! Uh, wow! Oh, what's this? Wow! 
and oh, uh, get better at you know building our game the way that we want it to. With the the oh, stuff's going to this? change a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully all for the better. Definitely never going to change this game and make it worse because that's impossible. Because that can't happen. Wow. Because we're too good. Wow. Oh. Because Ooh, what's this? My team is too good. Wow. Dylan wouldn't. Dylan would not let me make this game worse. Wow. What's regardless. Oh, what's this? Of whether or not I try. Pow! Pow! Oh! Oh! What's this? D -d -d. Pow! Pow! Um, so what else pow. can I talk about? I guess I can talk about the sound. Oh! What's uh, this? So yeah, you may have noticed the beautiful sound effects. Most of them are placeholders right now. Pow! But there are a few oh, finished this? sounds, like the explosions on uh, the Titan, the big like Titan smacks. Smashing into the ground. Ah, there's oh, the fireball. What's this? Da, da, da. Uh, I should preface me going through this dungeon with... Uh, I'm not... Uh, I'm not a level designer. Or I'm not one of the level designers, Ratherly. Ra wow. Wow. Ratherly. Wow. Hey, what's this? I'm, not one of the, I'm not one of the level designers. Oh, what's this? Um, Hey, what's this? Which is not to say, like, Hi. I am. Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't dare touch level design. That's disgusting. Oh, it's beneath this? me. No. Um, I'm just Hi. Hi. better at Hi. other stuff. So oh, I've been doing this? that other stuff instead of Hi. designing oh, mediocre levels oh, this? for this game. Pow. 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 Oh, what's this? And oh, I say mediocre this? not because this game is mediocre. Pow. Pow. But because. Oh, what's this? Um, I don't want to say that I make mediocre Pow. levels actually either. That's that's not a very nice thing to say about Ooh, myself. It just Pow. takes me Pow. it just takes Pow. me a lot longer to make good levels than it does for me to make good enemies Pow. and things like that. Pow. Anyways, Pow. all I have to say, I didn't uh, I didn't design any of these what's rooms this? or the dungeons, so I'm not super familiar Pow. with its layout Pow. or very good at the game in general because ah. I'm not what's very this? good at oh, what's this? twin stick shooters in general. I'm much better at strategy games. Wow. Oh, what's this? Ah, uh, that's a bubble shield pickup, but it looks like it spawned in the ground. Oh, what's this? Unfortunate. Oh, what's this? If I had designed this level, it would probably still be in the ground. If I'm being honest with myself. Yeah, so I've been doing most most of my work has been the enemies and stuff. Wow. Wow. Oh. Um I made oh, I made uh, wow. I made all the, the charger and the, the shooter oh, and all their, their wow. good wow. And all their goodness wow. and goody bits. Oh, what's this? Get away from me. Right back Wow, oh, what's this? Wow. Wow. Oh, what's this? But uh yeah, oh, I didn't this? do any of these levels. Wow. Oh, what's this? So I'm probably going. I'm probably not going to make it to the end. Oh, what's this? Honestly, I kind of, I kind of want to not get to the end, even if I can. Wow. Just so uh, I leave something for you guys to, wow. to, to, to experience that's brand new and never before seen. Oh, what's this? You didn't see me wow. get there, because I'm not going to get there. Oh, oh, um, what's this? I guess just talk about some stuff that's specific to the dungeon. Um, you see those blue arrows? Those blue arrows pop up. Anytime you, you clear a room, ouch, um, and they just basically tell you um, what room you can go to, or what, what areas are rooms that you can go to. It's not incredibly super clear, um, because, you know, the, the walls, the doors are the size of giant walls. Oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? So those arrows help. Um, you can also uh, press escape or start and bring up this mini-map, and you can look around the mini-map and it'll it'll show you all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't think we have any special marking for the boss level, but the boss level is here, this one right here, after this big long hallway. Um, so if I want to get there, I've got to go up, and then this way, and then up, and then up, and that way. Anyway, so the sounds, most of the sounds are still placeholders. Um, but I am uh, wow. going to be doing the sound design for this game. Hopefully, uh, we might be working with with uh, with an actual like sound engineer eventually. Um, but I would like. Oh come on! 
Ow, hey, what's wow. this? But I would like uh, to do the sound design. The big problem with doing sound design is, uh, oh, wow. Well, wow. for one, wow. I gotta spend wow. I gotta spend time making the game because I want the, because we want the game to be good. So hey, we want, I want to be spending time on making wow. the quality of the game gameplay better. Hey, what's this? Um, and the wow. other one being, wow. you know, I'm I'm in a game wow. design bachelor's, wow. not a sound wow. design bachelor's degree. Oh, hey, what's so this? So the the time that I spend hey, making wow. Uh, wow. audio. <laughs> Is not uh, is not they're not loggable hours. Um, like I have to I have to log uh, 50 hours of work per week that I'm making this final if I want to get a hundred. Um, if I want to get a can't touch if I want to get an A. And the amount of and uh. Oh, what's this? Seen as uh, this is a course for game design and not audio design. Oh, what's this? The time that I spend wow. oh, working on audio is not wow. loggable hours. Wow. Oh, what's this? And putting in 50 hours of work a week is is uh. Wow. Oh, what's this? Is uh. Wow. Oof. Is wow. a lot of work. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna die. No, 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 no! Yep, yeah, I died. Job, really. I can't totally not sarcastic. Yeah. God. Absolutely. Un Despicable. Believable. No, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can't. Unbelievable. Um. So I can't. Uh, I can't log any of the time that I spend making the sound effects. As uh, as hours of working on the game. Um, we are going to be working with artists. Um, we are, are we're actually already working with artists. Um, that's one of the cool things that Full Sail does. Um, the game designs final uh, for for the the people in the game design degree, and uh, they get to work with people in the game art degree. Uh, people who are here wow. to become wow. uh, artists for wow. games. What's this? Um, so wow. their final project is actually oh, to wow. make art for oh, our this? final project. Oh, what's this? Or uh, wow. rather. Wow. Large parts of their final oh, project can oh, be to make art wow. for for oh, us. This? They're wow. they're highly encouraged to, because oh, then uh, they get the actual experience of making art for a wow. game as the game wow. is being developed, and they get they get wow. you know a better uh, they they get oh, they learn better. Wow. They're they're more prepared for when they actually oh, have to go wow. into the industry oh, and this? and uh, make wow. art for for games. Wow. Because wow. instead of you know wow. just what's making this? art and, and the teachers going art, this is what it's going to be like when you actually go oh, into the this? industry, wow. which uh, oh, the teachers this? are very good at. But uh, it's still not quite the same as making art for a game that's actually oh, being this? made. Oh, what's this? But anyways, all that to say, we're we're working with artists. We've got a decent amount of concept art up, uh, so they're going to be making actual art that we can put into wow. the game wow. oh, very this? soon. Hopefully. Oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? Um, which is going to be great, because... Wow. Wow. Oh, what's this? Um, wow. Oh, what's this? I do oh, really this? like our game, but I think wow. it's going to feel wow. a lot oh, better this? once oh, we're... This? Once we uh, we actually get to see, you know, Volstad wow. with his big crossbow oh, arm and his, 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 his disgusting oh, magic, this? angry demon gauntlet, and, and, wow. and wow. you know, we're not what's just this? all wow. cubes. Oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? Cubes and grids and... Squares and circles. Pow. Pow. Oh, Pow. what's this? Ow. Oh, what's this? I think that's oh, going to make the this? game feel feel significantly Pow. better. Oh, what's this? I got him. No, there's still this. Pow. Oh, what's this? Got him. Pow. Um, Pow. Oh, Pow. one of the other things. I, I, I'm always, always sidetracking myself when I talk. This is, this is why I should have talked about the dungeon before I went into it. Um, you'll notice when I finish clearing a room, oh, what's this? Oh, all what's this? of my bolts get sent, get uh, picked up. So, Pow. like if I clear a room, Pow. Pow. Um, I'm not able to accidentally leave any bolts behind. So the I get my bolts back um, when I clear a room. I also get my bolts back when I enter a new room. It's like if oh, I what's this? let me see, is that everybody? Oh, what's That's this? everybody. So I've cleared the room, all my bolts came back to me, then if I fire off my bolts again, and then enter a new room, they come back to me again. Um, so that 
helps keep the, wow. the players what's from the, ever wow. being able what's to this? accidentally leave their uh, bolts behind. What's this? I might have already mentioned this, I don't remember. But you can destroy destructibles with your sword, and it doesn't use drips. Which is just wow. a wow. Oh, bit of quality wow. of life thing that we, that we put in. Wow. Um, what's this? We uh, we wanted we wanted it so that you could destroy them, destroy destructibles with your sword even when you're out of drips. That's not working right now. Oh, what's this? But uh, oh, what's this? Ultimately, that's how we want it to work. Oh, what's this? Just to uh, just because you know, there's there's no real reason to make wow. the to make the player have to have to work What's harder to, wow. to get to wow. pop all the destructibles and get the the health pickups wow. and such oh come on i didn't want to kill oh, what's this? i wanted to leave both feet for wow. life oh what's this uh, another sign wow. that i'm a bad player oh, i'm not this? i'm not ever using the evader oh, the charge this? shot yeah, can't touch me they're really really good and i just keep forgetting wow. to because I'm not good at this game. Oh, what's this? Alright, where are you? There you are. Wow, ow. Oh, Dang. What's, wow. Oh, what's, oh, what's this? Oh, what's this? Wow. Um, but anyway, so oh, all of the this? sounds, all the sounds are wow. produced wow. by, by wow. the team. Oh, uh, all the placeholder sounds, wow. there, there's, wow. you know, placeholder oh, sounds absolutely everywhere. This? The only things that aren't placeholder sounds are the explosions and the enemy hurt sounds, like if I shoot this guy. Pow. Pow. Oh, what's this? Pow. You'll hear he makes oh, little, little grunty sounds. Pow. 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 Oh, what's, oh, what's this? Pow. Their death sounds are still placeholders. Ow. Pow. Oh, what's this? Um, oh, what's this? Yeah, but I made, but uh, I made all of the, all of the non-placeable sounds are made by me. Pow, pow. Um, oh, and the music this? is also made by me. And I would love to, pow, I would love to pow, be able to, pow. to spend more time on the, the audio of this game. But we need oh, to make this? the gameplay, and I need to log time. Um, I'm pow, gonna, we're, we're gonna still be working this? on this game after we graduate. Um, we're ideally going to be releasing it pow, somewhere, pow, hopefully Steam. Pow. Um, oh, what's this? Pow. I'm not sure. We'll, 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 oh, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Pow. Oh, what's this? Pow. But, uh, oh, what's this? Pow. Oh, oh, what's I this? killed him again. Oh, what's I want to believe that bolt thief alive. Pow. Oh, what's this? The bolt thieves are kind of nice because you can just run around and shoot all your bolts. And then, uh, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll pick them up and put them in their nest. So you can just run around and shoot your bolts all over the place. Pow. Pow. And then just come back to the nest uh, and pick them all up. But I keep killing them by accident, so it's not happening. Alright. Uh, yep. Give me my bolts. There they are. Oh, there they are. So the bolts do take a bit of time to get to you, so the player is still, you know, encouraged not to leave their bolts behind. Oh, what's this? Because it's not a good idea. But they're not um they're not completely hung out to dry. Oh, what's this? What's this? Good lord. Ah! Pow. Pow. No, 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 no. I... Oh, what's this? Really? I'm so oh, good. This? I'm so perfect at... I'm so good at accidentally oh, killing these bolt Pow. Teams. Pow. Oh, come on. Give... Oh, what's this? Pow. Miss me. Bait over oh, here. Oh, what's this? Bang. Pow. 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 Yeah, and see, he'll just pick him up and bring him back. Oh, unfortunately, I have—I actually have to kill him because the, the oh, room doesn't this? open until you kill all the enemies. Oh no! Pow! Ah. These rooms are stressful. Hey, what's this? Yeah, um, and I—I I would really like to get more time and make all the sounds, but. And especially music, I really liked making the music, making this one song. Ideally, I'm going to be making um, two separate themes for each for each level. Um, so I guess I should probably talk about what we want this game to look like when it's finished. 
Um, so we're working with an art team. Soon we'll be getting assets. Um, but the levels that we have, right now we only have this one prototype dungeon. Um, and it's 24 rooms, I believe. Uh, some of them are reused. There are 15 unique rooms. Um, and then 24 total. So ultimately, we're, we're, we're hoping to have four dungeons. Um, and I say dungeons, quote-unquote. Uh, four, four levels of the game. Uh, the first one will be uh, plains. This big open plains area. Um, you know, rainy. Wow. Probably, I think we decided that hey, it's going to be this? like rainy wow. and, and, and sad and dreary. Hey, what's this? And there's going to be ruins all over the place. Um, and demons wow. running around. Wow. But generally, big open plains. Wow. And that's going to be the first level. The second level will be the forest. Oh, hey, what's this? Um, and it's this is dark, misty forest. You go into there. Um, it'll be nighttime. It's it's going to hey, be real, this? real dense wow. vegetation. Oh, hey, what's this? And you know, demons running all over the place. Uh, then they're going to be. Then there's going to be the badlands, and the badlands will be like a like a super craggy desert area with, with lots of cliffs and rocks everywhere. Um, think think like uh, like the Grand Canyon. Um, then the final level will be a volcano. And vo uh, a quote-unquote volcano. Wow. Because the volcano is wow. Wow. both a geographical phenomenon where Ooh, what's this? Wow. lava wow. where, you know, Ooh, the, the lava is coming up out of the ground. But it's also going to be a portal to hell. And uh, uh, you'll be you'll be spawned in a hub world, um, which leads to all four of those different places. Um, the hub world is going to be a broken down, ruined bastion, um, like the the castle where where Bolstad and all of his his knightly friends used to hang out and, and have feasts, and and then they and then be like, hey guys, you want to go have a crusade against a bunch of demons? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. What could go wrong? And then everybody died, and the castle got invaded and destroyed. And Bolstad was—I don't, I don't know—we haven't we haven't fleshed out his backstory completely, but you know, probably like Bolstad lost his hand, and the demons left him there to die or something terrible like that. And then uh, Bolstad gets his hand replaced by a crossbow, and he gets the demon gauntlet, and he goes back, and he uh, he he. Uh, Oh, what's this? Pow. And he, uh, he kills all the demons. Oh, what's this? Pow. Pow. So, you know, Pow. you go through each of the levels, and then you get, uh... Pow. Oh, what's this? Pow. You get to the... And each level will have oh, a boss fight. This? Uh, this level has a boss fight. It has that big titan that we oh, saw. Oh, what's this? Pow. I'm gonna, gonna stop going through this, this, this level now. Just talk, we'll just talk on the credit screen. Um... Uh, I, ultimately, we're, we're hoping to have it be like a roguelike type uh, game with procedural generation. Um, the, each dungeon will have a set amount of rooms, but what exact room, like combination, what, it, what setup it ends up with, that'll be that'll be that'll be procedurally generated. It'll be kind of randomized. Um, and the player will keep all of their all of the stuff that they pick up, uh, like from one dungeon, they'll get to keep when they go over to the next dungeon, and then the next dungeon, and then ultimately the final dungeon. Um, if they die, then they have to start the run over. Um, the planes are going to be the first level, um, so we're not. So the there it's going to be a bit easier. It's going to be a bit more of a learning environment. We're probably not going to have like a tutorial exactly where we you know, like hold the player by the nose and throw up a bunch of text in their face that says, "Hey, press this button to do this. Press that button to do that." Um, we're going to try and set it up so it's more of a a, a natural learning experience. We're still going to need to put text and information at the player somehow, but. Uh, we're hoping that the first level is going to do that. Um, so we're not going to make them replay the first level um, if they die. But the other two levels, um, they will have. To, but uh, once they like once once they finish the first level, 
they unlock access to the to the once they finish the planes, they will unlock access to the uh, the forest in the Badlands. And then once they finish the forest in the Badlands, they unlock access to the final dungeon, the boss. So then, if they die, uh, what will happen is that they'll still have access unlocked to the the forest in the Badlands and the planes. Um, so they'll not be forced to replay the planes. However, they will still have to replay at least two dungeons in order to unlock access to the boss, uh, the final dungeon. Um, and those two dungeons can be uh, any that the player chooses. They can play the forest and the badlands. They can play the forest and the plains. They can play the plains and the badlands. Um, they could play the badlands twice. At least I think that's what we decided on. Um, but they'll, but they'll, they'll, they'll have to play through two dungeons again. Because uh, the way that we're setting up the boss dungeon, the final dungeon, is that it's going to, it's probably going to be way too hard and too frustrating to play through unless you have some of the items that you would gain by running through one of the, the, the lesser dungeons. So we're going to make, so we, we're going to be making the player, um, you know, buff up and, and grab all the, the, the extra items and, and upgrades and stuff. Uh, but we're, we will not be forcing them to replay through the easiest level uh, unless they unless they want to. And then if you beat the final boss, then you win. You beat the game. And you go to a win screen. And you feel really good about yourself. And we give you a Steam achievement if this game goes on Steam. And we figure out how to do that. Um, so that's pretty much it for the game. Uh, there's there's more to the there's more to the dungeon than than I played through, but I want to leave some of that for for you to discover on your own. Uh, I guess I should I guess I can talk through through all these wonderful amazing people. Um, so this is the credit screen. This is a list of people that I love. It is an incomplete list of the people that I love. Um, we've got the design team. These are the people that I'm meeting with uh, every day or pretty much every day uh, for the past... They've, they've been my classmates. It's pretty, they, most of them have been my classmates since, I've got, since I came here. Uh, and we've been, we've been working on this game collaboratively for a long time, for two and a half months now. So we've got, uh, we've got Robert. He, uh, Robert. Robert does a lot of the, the systems and mechanics uh, like Robert, Robert and I are kind of the the the. Uh, like I'm gonna list off like what we've primarily been working on. Keep in mind, this is the 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 game is you know it's attribution soup. Everybody everybody touches every system. Everybody breaks every system and then has to fix it. Um, and anytime somebody makes some makes like a new a new thing, they need to have the old systems talk to the new thing. So they go and they work on the old system. Um, so everybody's 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 got a hand in everything, but uh, Rob and I are have been primarily uh, about uh, building um, mechanics, uh, and when I say mechanics, I mean like uh, the the system that allows projectiles to be spawned and exist. The system about how the how the sword behaves. Uh, when it hits enemies, uh, the system that allows enemies to have health that gets removed and then they die. Um, I, I've done primarily work on the AI and their systems, so like their, the, the health system um, and the uh, shootable system, the thing that allows things to get hit with, with projectiles and take damage, um, and uh, the state machine. Um, if you're familiar with what that is, if not, don't worry about it. Um, it's basically just a, a, a method of of storing information and behavior that makes it a lot easier to make new enemies that change the behavior a little bit, but not completely. It made it, it made things like making the burst shooter and the spread shooter a lot easier because instead of having to basically make two completely new enemies, I just took the shooter that was already there and added a little bit of extra stuff on top of it. So I've been doing most of the AI. 
Rob's been doing some of the AI as well. He's also, and he's made uh, a lot of the systems that uh, are not centered around the AI. He's largely the one to blame for the evade working as beautifully as it does. Um, he made the projectile system. He made he made some of the other stuff. He made most of the active items. Uh, he actually made all of the active items except for the two that are still broken and shouldn't and need to be revamped or removed. Uh, then we've got Griffin. Griffin has uh, Griffin has done literally all of the UI. I think he made. He made every menu, every every UI button, everything that you see, the, this credit scene, all of it. Um, well, Dylan, Dylan's done some of the UI stuff as well. Um, but Griffin's, Griffin's primarily been working on the UI and also uh, the controls. Um, like he's like he's the reason that this that this menu screen works as beautiful, looks 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 nice and clean and beautiful, and the options screen has you know all these subcategories and, and it all works and it and it works with the controller and uh, it also works with mouse and keyboard and you know we have the ability to switch between mouse and mouse and controller turn that back up so we can listen to this amazing music that I totally love um, then we've got Jonathan and Mitchell. Jonathan and Mitchell are our level designers. Um, they did uh, they did a decent amount of work on the crossbow and on um, oh I can't remember specifics. Um, yeah, but now that uh, now that our now that our game is mechanically complete enough that we can actually you know make functional levels out of it uh, they've been they've been doing our level design and they the, they've been doing amazing work they've been doing work a lot better and a lot faster than I would certainly be able to um, you've got me that's me Colby Peck the boy what did I say at the beginning the handsome lad that everybody desires but nobody can have um, I've been I've been doing primarily AI work, as I've been saying. Uh, and then we've got Dylan. Dylan is our producer. He is the one who's been doing an excellent job of making sure that everybody stays on task, uh, that everybody has work that they that they can do, and that everybody's prioritizing that uh, that everybody's like prioritizing the tasks that need to be finished first, um, making sure that we stay in scope uh, so we don't you know we don't. We don't get started on massive systems that we're never going to have time to complete. Um, he's making sure that you know we're 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 using what's called an MVP structure, um, which basically an MVP structure is just at every step of the way our game. Uh, it's called, it's MVP like minimum viable product. Basically, we at every milestone instead of saying, okay, we want this system to be a hundred percent complete. And we have, but we, but we still have like no gameplay. At every at every step along the way, we want to have uh, a, a we want to have playable content, something that we can test. Um, and the the MVP structure is about is all about like okay, um, so we get enough, so we've got this, we've got a week to work on the game. At the end of the week, we want something that we would be able to package and ship. Um, if we really, really wanted to, if we really, really had to, and then next week we we make a better thing that we can package and ship. So you know, instead of having you know five months where we have four months of just building systems and there's absolutely no gameplay content, and then the very last month we make one build and then another build and then another build. For the entire five months, we're making builds all the way through. We're getting them tested. We're getting player. We're getting feedback from players and from teachers, um, and all of that stuff. And he's been really, really good about that. He's also he's also done a decent amount of in-engine work too. I shouldn't I shouldn't uh, I don't I don't want anybody to think that he hasn't done any work on the actual like gameplay mechanics and content. He has. 
he's done he's done plenty um, and he's also but he's he's also the one to blame he's he's also without him uh, everybody who's on this team and myself included would not have applied themselves nearly as efficiently as they have um, so he's an amazing he's an amazing producer then we've got our art team um, I don't work with the art team directly Dylan is the one who talks with the art team uh, Dylan and Griffin but uh, we've gotten some concept art from them and soon we will be getting actual assets from them that we can start to implement in the game uh, we've got Patricia she's our uh, resident rigger um, she makes rigs and rigs are basically like the the are basically skeletons um, uh, the rig is a, when an animation when an, when a when a rig is set up for some object that needs to be animated it makes it simpler because then when you move like like if you were to have a human when you move your shoulder you can't move your shoulder without also moving your elbow and your wrist um, and building a rig makes it so that in the rig when you move uh, when you move your model's shoulder, their arm and their their elbow and their wrist also move a lot and the automatically. So instead of the animator having to do you know three separate steps where they move the shoulder, then they move the elbow, then they move the wrist, they just move the shoulder. Um, and that's what riggers do. She's also probably she's also said she wants to uh, get onto environmental art because we've got more because. Uh, she's going. She's going to be able to finish the rigs much faster than, like she'll 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 finish them and she'll then she'll have no work uh, because she's very fast. So she's also going to be our environmental artist, our lead environmental artist. Then we've got Dusty and Adam. Uh, they're our modelers. They make three D models. Um, Dusty's probably going to be making a lot of the organic models, so like Bolstad himself and a lot of the enemies. And then Adam is going to be making um, uh, non-living stuff. So like destructibles, armor, uh, probably the gauntlet and the crossbow, and all that kind of stuff. And then we've got Jarek. Jarek is going to be our animator. He will make Bolstad, and he's going to make him look really, really cool and really alive. and all the enemies, and they're also going to all look really cool and really alive. Um, I think, I don't think I have anything left to talk about. I've been talking for 3,500 seconds. That's a long time. That's like 50 minutes. Actually, that's over an hour, I think. No. I don't know. I'm too tired to be doing the math in my head. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's Bullstead. Thank you very much for watching. Um, this is what I've been, this is what the past two and a half months of my life have been, and this is what the future two and a half months of my life are going to be. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, and good night.